Hi everyone, as we approach the last part of our definition of abnormality sessions, it's a really good time to look back on all of the definitions and see how they fit into the bigger picture. So just as a reminder, definitions of abnormality are just one part of the psychopathology topic. They'll feature on paper one and there are different ways to define what is meant by abnormality. And there's the four of them on the screen that you should be familiar with at this point. So for our first task, we turn our heads to organisation, which is a really important study skill, let alone exam skill. So arrange the keywords that are on one side of the screen into the definition of abnormality that's the best match on the other side of the screen. So pause the video for 10 minutes while you give this some careful thought and organise the keywords. Hopefully that was okay and the correct answers are on the screen and you can pause this video for a fair few minutes if you want to self-assess or even take them down in the correct order. Okay, so moving on, we're going to have some statements on the screen next and your task now is to decide if you think they're true or false. But rather than just have a 50-50 answer, if you're not sure, what you should do in these situations is be able to justify your answer. So if you think something's true, say why. And if you think something's false, say why. So here's the seven statements on the screen and pause the video for five minutes while you read through them and make your decisions. OK, let's go through some answers then. You can mark them off as we go through. So deviation from social norms refers to the breaking of explicit rules and deviating from what is considered acceptable in society. And this is incorrect and a very tricky one, but due to the word explicit, this is false. So as we know from earlier sessions, deviation from social norms is about breaking implicit rules. Number two, statistical frequency uses a measure of central tendency and a measure of dispersion to identify what is and what is not rare. This is true. The central tendency being the mean and the measure of dispersion being the standard deviation. Failure to function adequately makes use of self-report observations to determine a functioning score via the GAF scale. This statement, as it appeared on the screen, was false. Again, it's really important that you've read these carefully because although there is a GAF scale and there is some self-report methods, no such thing as a self-report observation, so this statement will be very inaccurate. Deviation from ideal mental health refers to being unable to meet criteria for normality. And of course, this is true. Failure to have personal autonomy is a deviation from social norms. This is false for this task since personal autonomy is related to a different definition. Causing discomfort in other people is an indication that someone is deviating from ideal mental health. And this one was false. And that's because causing other people discomfort belongs with the failure to function adequately definition. And finally, maladaptive behaviour is an indication that someone is not functioning adequately. And this is true. So give yourself a tick for any of those that you got right. So just a quick recap on exam skills. So one important exam skill is to be able to elaborate on your points. And in AO1 questions, you must be able to decode the exam questions, select appropriate material, elaborate, and use specialist terms. So we're going to put all this to the test. So for this task, read the exam style questions that appear on the screen. And for each one, complete the following. Decode the question. So as we've done in previous sessions, look for command words, instructions, or, or any particulars that are crucial to interpreting the question accurately. And then answer the question with sufficient detail. So the questions will appear on the screen and you can pause this for 15 minutes while you give these questions some careful thought and write your answers down. So when you decoded the questions, hopefully you spotted the command words. So outline, so we know we're not evaluating here. Deviation from social norms, so select the right information. So we're not wanting to talk about any other definition except deviation from social norms. Describe two and only two of ideal mental health. 
and we can see that's worth four marks. So the word describe is telling us that this is an AO1 skill and no AO3 will be credited. Number three, the word explain tells us that we've got, got a good amount of work to do to earn the four marks that are available. Focus on statistical infrequency and a second job to do in this question, which is you use an example in your answer. And lastly, outline is our command word again, so we know that we're being tested on AO1. And we've got to this time focus on failure to function adequately for three marks. So some suggested answers. Deviation from social norms is when a behaviour is deemed to be unacceptable by society or not following implicit rules in society. Question two. One criteria of ideal mental health is self-actualisation. This refers to a person's ability to recognise and strive to reach their own potential. Now, if we'd have stopped there, we would have only have offered one of the criteria when the question asks for two. So the second part of this question was added to fulfil the criteria in the question. Behaviours that are statistically infrequent are behaviours that are rare and do not commonly occur. And it's a mathematical approach to identify an abnormal behaviour. So that part of the answer fulfills the first part of the question. And if we stop there, then we're looking at partial performance and probably a maximum of two marks. So the final part, the example was added so that we can reach the four. And lastly, failure to function adequately refers to a person's inability to function in everyday tasks such as hygiene, self-care and work. Someone who's failing to function may also experience personal distress caused by their behaviour and may also cause other people to feel discomfort. That's probably enough for three marks, but just for safety, we're going to add a little bit more. And in addition to this, someone who has thoughts or behaviours that stop them from maintaining good relationships with other people would also be considered as failing to function. So you can compare your answers to these that were on the screen you can rewind the video to, to have a more careful look and look at the comparisons between structure, terminology, detail, amount of elaboration and ultimately check that you decoded the question right in the first place.